Hello and welcome to Kevin's Corner TV. My name is Kevin Gordon and I'm the editor of the Gold Coast Gazette, a weekly newspaper established in 1991 along with my mother. The newspaper covers the North Shore of Long Island and over the years I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of interesting people. Through this show, I hope to introduce you to some of those people. I hope you enjoy it. Today I'm speaking with Peter Peebles, a local artist, illustrator. Peter, thank you for being on the show. Appreciate it. Very nice of you to have me. Peter, tell me how you got into being an artist from the beginning. Well, from the very beginning, I think it was uh, probably primarily my, my mother. My mom, who is one of the most creative people uh, that I can think of, and certainly was a big influence on me, uh, not in a pushy way. She was just very, in a very creative way, she did her own thing, and I think my brothers and sisters and myself picked up on that at a very early age. And then it was kind of a natural progression into uh, enjoying reading. I loved to read. My dad was a uh, reading specialist, mm. and that was in education. Uh, so in the enjoyment of reading books, uh, I started to pay attention to the illustrations that went along with the books. I started to get more and more into that, as well as um, my interest in uh, comic books at a very young age, you know, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, uh, the Hulk. Uh, I had my nose in that stuff all the time. Right, right. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really think of doing it myself until I started getting into my uh, teens. And it was in the back of my mind when I went to college that I wanted to study psychology. And I actually went to college to study psychology. Mm. And I, I spent about three years in the psychology department. I was about a year short of my degree. And I found myself spending most of my time at the art department. And uh, it just dawned on me one day that I would, that's really what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I started to, uh, I switched my major and uh, uh, started, you know, painting and taking it a little more seriously. Wow. Uh, painting wow. and drawing. Wow. And I switched from that to uh, get a little more uh, intensive uh, education uh, and decided to go to art school. So I went from North Dakota mm. to where... Where you grew up in Navajo. Where I grew up, yeah. Sioux Indians. Sioux Indians, right. And uh, started looking around for schools in the area. Didn't find anything real close by, so uh, uh, I eventually arrived at Kansas City which had a very good art school, um, kind of known for, I think, Walt Disney. Mm. Studied there for a while. To Jasper Johns, to Larry Poons. They had a whole range of, uh, of uh, uh, expertise in teaching, from painting realism to abstract uh, work. And they had a couple of good instructors there that I wanted to study with. So I found myself enrolling at the Kansas City Art Institute and uh, got my degree there. Wow. And uh, then I decided that uh, uh, illustration, uh, let's give it a try. Right. You know, well, let's, let's give that a try. And I started sending out samples of my work while I was still in Kansas City and really didn't get much of a response from that. You know, it's a very competitive field, especially to break into. So I decided to move east. Mm -hmm. And I found New York to be a little intimidating for a kid from North Dakota. Mm, I could imagine, <laughs> yeah. So I settled on uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. And I moved there uh, after about seven years in Boston. Uh, made the move to New York and uh, settled here on Long Island, eventually in Glen Cove. We lived in Queens for a while. Mm -hmm. And I really started to get seriously into marketing my work. Mm. You know, I was meeting artists. It was kind of exactly what I envisioned it being. Uh, going to different types of conventions, meeting some of the illustrators that I admired, and uh, it was through those connections that I, I found an agent. And the agent, almost immediately overnight, like quadrupled the amount of work I was doing. Mm. So I went from being able to produ produce a piece, uh, just taking my time, you know, taking like a month and a half to do a painting, and all of a sudden the agent is saying, um, can you do that in a week? Mm. And I just panicked. <laughs> <laughs> I remember just being terrified with that first book cover. So I literally didn't sleep for about a week doing that, wow. doing that picture. And uh, 
And it came out. Now, what was right. that for? What, what book was that? That was for the Ace, Ace Book Publishing Publishing Company. Mm -hmm. um, and what was it of? It was a sci-fi science fiction book cover. Right. And that was pretty much what my portfolio was. Sci-fi. Yeah, that was always what my interest was in uh, producing. And uh, he had the my agent had very good connections uh, in the science fiction world, mm -hmm. uh, publishing world, and uh, you know I kind of went from there. Wow. Um, so it's all been science fiction. Almost all science fiction. Uh, as I went along, some other things started coming my way, mm -hmm. like postage stamps, uh, which was a lot of fun. It doesn't pay much, but it was a lot of fun doing it. it got me a lot of stamp? attention. Yeah. yeah. What was that? Of? I did. Um, um, prominent people from the jazz era. Oh. I also did some aviation post uh, uh, stamps mm -hmm. and um, stars of the silver screen. Mm. And those those kind of started getting me uh, in line for other jobs, other types of work. Uh, CD-ROM packaging. I did a lot of work for uh, uh, magazine publishing, Wired magazine. Mm. Um, with still the base being primarily science fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now you've always been into science fiction as far as movies and TV and, and the books. Still, it's still, it's right? still, it's still a lot of fun for me. Right. You know, right. I still, you know, uh, you know, this is some of the things I collect around here. Right. And I just have, I just have a feel for it. You know, just uh, I understand it. Um, any, you go into any bookstore, and the two largest sections of any bookstore are going to be romance and science fiction. Mm -hmm. They're just huge departments. Um, but publishing no notoriously is not a real, you know, they don't pay a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I knew so I had to kind of start branching into other things. Right. Uh, and I started getting a little more involved in my personal work. Uh, and more recently, I've been doing a lot of uh, portraiture. Um, I, mean, I did some murals and uh, something I just kind of fell into. And that was so much fun that, uh, you know, I've been kind of actively seeking uh, doing more mural work. And I'm actually thinking of in the next uh, six, seven months of starting my own uh, business. M mural business, doing, right? doing primarily murals. Right. Things have changed so much in publishing with uh, a lot of the imagery for uh, books being generated through in-house through computers. Right, right. And, um, you know, for those of us that have been around a long time, you know, the amount of work, there just isn't as much work as there used to be. So right. most of my friends or myself are finding, our, uh, finding ourselves doing uh, a great many other things. Mm -hmm. You know, getting our hands involved with more than one thing, where I used to rely on just, you know, doing two or three book covers a month. It's now down to more like one and a half or maybe one, even one every two months. So, you know, right. you got to do other things. Well, the portraits are amazing. I've seen some of them. You've done some of the kids that from All Saints Regional, which is great. Um, so I think that's that's a great direction to go to. As oh, well as uh, it, 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 again, it's something I kind of right? fell into. I got involved with uh, uh, various charity organizations. All Saints Regional was one of them. Right. And I did a couple of um, kids for prominent people in the area. And it was through other people seeing those at their houses that I started getting phone calls from people, mm. you know, you know, uh, how much do you charge? You know, mm. what, what does this cost? You know, right. how do you do this? You know, and, uh, and it's kind of, you know, just taking a life of its own. For Very me. nice. Very nice. Now, if we get a minute, maybe you can show me some of the work that you've done. Uh, now, these are some of the jackets that you've done? These are some of the jackets over the years that I've done. Um, from William Shatner. I did uh, several books, mm -hmm. hardcovers for him. Mm -hmm. There he is. And uh, good old Isaac Asimov. Hmm. There's the cover again. Um, some of the mass market or soft cover books. Again, all science fiction. A lot of the themes in science fiction are so strange. Mm. This was one of my favorite jobs because as a kid <clears throat> I had read a lot of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember my agent calling and saying, uh, she was English, you know, Pete, huh? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Edgar Rice Burroughs? And I went, are you kidding? Ah, uh, nice. I and she had, kind of she a had a job. Yeah, she <laughs> had a number of jobs. Uh, they were reissuing all the old Tarzan books at the time. Right, excellent. So I got into that. Good. There's the, there we go. The hard cover. Mm -hmm. Belongs to my mother now. Mm -hmm. Right. And I did uh, quite a few of the Indiana Jones, uh, oh. young Indiana Jones books oh, cool. for uh, young adult reading. Right. And what's interesting about these is you know, I would send in the sketches for them. And there were a few times when I'd get uh, reply or get this stuff coming back with notations from George Lucas. Mm, cool. He was a very hands-on guy with everything. Wow. And once in a while he would check out you know, these things and he would make little notations that what was appropriate and what was not appropriate. Right, on the original. Uh, this is kind of how the portraiture got started. Okay, that's very nice. I would know. do um, uh, mainly people's kids, and mm -hmm. I would do them as portrait drawings. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's Max and Jordan. Yeah, he is Rashi Lewis. Let's see, my what sister doesn't like one? it, but this is my sister. That's great, yeah. In, yeah. in oil. Very nice. This was a book jacket, um, probability brooch from, wow, 1996. Wow. Yeah, that was, uh, so how many jackets do you think you've done over the years? Probably uh, the neighborhood of 170, wow. 175, wow. somewhere in that. And we're in your, this is your studio, this is what you call your cave, right? This is my uh, cave, this is and my And there's a lot of inspirational vacuum. pieces yeah. all over. I'm in here on a daily basis at least eight hours. Wow. With maybe yeah. Sunday off. So you find, as an artist, that's the best thing to do is keep focused and keep regular hours? Yeah, yeah. it kind of, it kind of demands its own. You right. Know, the amount of time you spend in here. Uh, when I was working, uh, when I was doing illustration on a more, you know, concentrated basis I was in here even longer mm. you know, 10 to 13 hours a day and uh, you really had very little uh, control over time off it didn't matter whether it was Christmas didn't matter whether right, it was right. you had a deadline if you it. had to finish the work you had to finish the work right, right. Uh, it hasn't been it isn't that way now you know, I have time to do things now right right uh, with my focus shifting to other, other areas that's cool. All right, good. But I work mainly in oil. Right. Uh, my preferred uh, base or, or uh, support is masonite, although uh, I use illustration board once in a while. Uh, I don't have to shift things around as much as I used to, so I can use a heavier support uh, for my own purposes. Uh, a lot of things are just sent via computer, um, although once in a while they want the, the original. Yeah. But mainly oil. From beginning to end, pretty much. Excellent. I see. Uh, psychology for Dummies is still on your desk. So oh, I, I still maintain up, my huh? interest in psychology. <laughs> over the years. Uh, that was originally what I wanted to do. So right, we, Peter. I really appreciate you being on the show. Yes, uh, uh, I, I'll look forward to seeing it. Uh, yeah. Although I'll probably cream soon. No, you did great. I appreciate uh, it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Here with Andy Gertler, and we're going to be talking about his amazing pumpkin carving, ice sculptures, uh, snow sculptures, and sand sculptures. Andy, thank you for being on the show. Uh, my pleasure. Appreciate Thanks. it. Um, so tell me, how did you get started in this? Um, many years ago, uh, I was at Jones Beach, and I saw somebody building a sand sculpture with uh, margin trowels and cake decorating tools, the way professionals do. And um, I was like, oh, I think I can do that. So. I went to the local hardware store, picked up some uh, some of the items, and uh, went back to the beach and just started uh, playing around in the sand and just fell in love with it. Wow. And so this was just 15 years ago you just decided you were going to do it. What were you doing that before that? 
Um, I was restoring musical instruments, brass, woodwinds, and strings. I did that for like 25 years. Wow. And, um, and then I, I, one day I hit a wall and I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I said to my wife at the time, uh, you know, I'd like, to, you know, I'd like to try sand sculpture professionally. And she was making a good living at the time. She goes, okay, you know, why don't you go ahead and try that and see what happens. And wow. Then, so you just history. decide you want to be a professional sand sculpturist, which yeah. is a unique business of its own. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of it. I mean, it's a niche market, so, you know, I mean, it's not, you know, saturated with, you know, a million guys doing it, so you can find work you know, right. all around the world. Right. And what work are you doing now? Are you doing corporate stuff? So or? I just booked uh, a couple of gigs down uh, for team building down in uh, the Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas, and um, I'll meet, like, 500 employees of... Xerox. And so we'll, I'll, I'll basically give them a brief lesson on how to build sand castles. And then we, I set them up with uh, all the tools and everything. We push up big piles of sand. And they have a huge sand castle contest. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's really. And it's uh, all about team building and all yeah, that and learning the techniques. It's a beautiful, it's a great natural team building because what happens is you get out to the beach, all the, all the clothes come off, all the titles come off. You know, you may have, you know, Sally there, the, the, uh, the receptionist who might have some uh, sculpting abilities, and she may lead the team. What happens is it's like kind of a morale builder. So when she goes back to the office, that goes back with mm. The tools you use besides sand is also snow, right? Yeah, I do snow sculptures. Uh, well, uh, so uh, snow sculpture, I just, whenever there's a nice snow that comes down, I walk outside and I'll, I'll, I'll build something out in my front yard just for the fun. Right, we've had a couple of photos in the Gazette as a oh, yeah, matter of fact of those, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is amazing. Um, you. Yeah. And you just, You've done like an uh, angel, I remember we had a photo of. Last year, the year before, we did an angel. Yeah. Right, right. Angels. right. Yeah, yeah. Now, most recently, we did, um, we did some video on you about the uh, pumpkins. You do a lot of pumpkin carving. Right, at this time of year. Well, we yeah. just finished the whole pumpkin season, but yeah, that's just been, I mean, I just started doing that maybe about three years ago. Okay, so we're here at the nursery and you are doing pumpkin carving. Tell me about the pumpkin carving and how you've done this. Okay, yeah, well, um, I've been pumpkin carving 3D pumpkins like this for about three years now. And um, I, uh, <clears throat> what it is, is it's a relief carving as opposed to a traditional jack-o'-lantern where you cut all the way through. This you're just carving a relief, like uh, like on a, a coin, that is just a relief carving. And that's what I'm doing here. So, pumpkins are great because it's another ephemeral art, like ice, sand, and snow, where I can just kind of put it out there and let it go. Mm, excellent. Which is... Uh, I don't, I don't I like to work in mediums that are, are temporary. Right, right. Now, where do you get your ideas as far as, like, for example, the pumpkin carving, um, the different images you've done, scary as well as fun and all that kind of stuff? Right. Yeah, kind of, basically, the, the pumpkin idea is just, you know, it depends on my mood, what I feel like doing. That's the beauty of it also is that I'm able to kind of, when I get hired to do a job, they let me, they give me carp launch and I can do whatever I want. So and the night before, I might think about a couple of ideas. I might think of a funny idea, or, or and I just kind of search the internet for you know ideas and images and things like that. And then, um, and then the next day, I'll bring a couple of different images, and then also look at the pumpkin that I get and see what it kind of tells me, because the pumpkin actually dictates what it wants to be a lot of times, and it can only do so many, so many different things. Cool. Yeah. Now, were you always an artist? You always drawing and stuff? Um, not really. I mean, I did a little bit, you know, when I was younger. Um, I was more a musician my whole life. I, I mean, that's really, that is really my true calling, is music. That's the thing that comes most naturally to me. I actually toil at sculpting. It's something that I, 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 I really I labor at, and I work hard at it. Um, I love doing it. It doesn't come as naturally to me as it does to some other people uh, that I work with. They, I mean, they're just, you know, it's just a natural thing. Just like the music naturally comes out of me. Right. You know, some people might toil at that. That's what really just pours out of me. All right, excellent. Now, the other thing is uh, oh, ice sculpture. How do you do that? Oh, yeah, well, um, I'm not really an ice sculptor. I, um, I did sculpt ice one time. Uh, I did two pieces, but it was at the World Championships. And um, in, in Fairbanks, Alaska, in 09. And I was fortunate enough, uh, my friend uh, Sergei Tilabrovsky from Moscow, who I've carved with him many years in sand, he, in, he invited me to, um, to participate in this event with him. And, uh, and we got the bronze and silver medal in two different, uh, the two different events. So, you know, 
Uh, my first time carving ice, I got to go on the podium twice at the World Championships. Wow. It was like a oh, dream. So, yeah, you are yeah, a nice yeah. sculpture, yeah? Well, you know, a couple, but that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> That's great. Now, um, there's also, you do Flash Booty? What is that? Flash Booty is my animation company. Uh, yeah, we create games and online content, web stuff, um, you know, websites, um, and really kind of anything that you, you want to do online. Of oh, course. Cool. Uh, a great artist who work for me, and fantastic animators and programmers. And, um, and that's, that's been my mainstay. That's been my business for all these years. It right. has enabled me to travel around the world building sand sculpture. Right. right. So tell me a little bit about the show you have on the Travel Channel. Uh, yeah. Oh. I, I've been fortunate enough to um, be on a reality TV show about, it's, uh, it's called Sand Masters, and it's on the Travel Channel, and it's about me and five of my friends just traveling around the world building sand sculptures. And this year we went to 16 different locations. Uh, we're in Thailand, in Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, Hawaii, New Zealand. It was really just an amazing time. Wow, wow. So are you done filming that? Or uh, we segment? finished last season, right. and uh, we just got picked up for season two. Wow, good. Congratulations. And, cool. uh, two weeks ago, I was down at Fantasy Fest down in Key West, Florida, shooting our first episode. Wow. And we go back out on the road uh, beginning of the next month. So uh, we're actually inside your house, and this is your sandbox in your house. Yeah, this is my sand, but this is a place I just come to practice and just do little sketches and try things out. And, you know, it was just... Uh, right. So out. throughout the winter and stuff, you could still be playing in the sand. Exactly. Yeah, cool. yeah. So it's just, you know, I felt like, you know, just char carving a little bit last night. And, uh, right. Actually, I had a couple of scotches in me when I carved that. <laughs> right. It looks great, though. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So this is the, uh, the little place where I just hang out and play. Right. And, yeah. and you're so close to the beach. You just walk down to the beach once in a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it's right here. Yeah, man. Yeah. This beautiful view right here out this window. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Being man. in Seacliff, you got plenty of sand to play in, right? Yeah, although I bring this, uh, this sand came from South Jersey. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Yeah. Actually, I, I had carved a sculpture at the world, uh, at down at Ground Zero. I do one every year. Um, I, I, I volunteer my time uh, for the Tunnel to Tower run. Mm. And it's... Um, uh, so we always do a firefighter scene, and uh, the sand gets donated. And it's really nice sand from South Jersey. Wow. And uh, so I, I, one day I just took a bunch of buckets, filled them up, and, and took it home because I right. was just gonna take it out and use it for sand in the streets and stuff like that. Right, exactly. And we recycle it, but uh, so is it a finer quality? This is a find, very or? fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at this stuff really close here, yeah. I mean, you can see how, you know. I mean, how, the, how well that packs and, and that, you know, and nice, clean edges that it leaves. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. Good. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, this is amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that you just decided, okay, I'm going to start being a sculptor in sand. That's well, just setting your mind to it, right? But, but that's all it is for anything in life, I think. It's just taking that first step. It's actually believing you can do something. You know, you, I hear people say, oh, I could never do that. And you know what? They're right. Because that attitude right there makes sure they'll never be able to do that. Mm -hmm. If you say you can do something and you believe it, I mean, you may fail. I mean, I fail all the time, but I keep trying. Mm -hmm. And I think that I can do anything. Right, right. You know? um, you need some setting dental, setting dental your mind I, to it. I have some dental tools that I use for my uh, sand sculpture. I think I can fix your teeth. Uh, no, so I don't I think that. <laughs> Get that license first. <laughs> I'll give you 50% off. All right. <laughs> um, All right, cool. Thank you, Andy, for oh, being on the show. I appreciate pleasure. it. Yeah, yeah, Very cool. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your music. Well, yeah, the, like I said, the music is really, first and foremost, what, what I feel I am and what, what, I, what comes most naturally to me. Right. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm, I've been writing songs for 30 years, and I've, I have a great songwriting uh, friend, uh, partner, Frank Cuthbert, who I, I really write most of my songs with. So like, I'll, I'll start writing a song and then I'll bring it to Frank. He's such a phenomenal lyricist. So he, he really just helps me hone everything down and, and adds or, or even just rewrites and says, that's crap, and throws it out. And, it just, and he's just, he just helps bring a really incredible life to our music. Cool. And, uh, yeah, so, and, I, and that's, and so I have a band. Uh, the band's called Crash My Party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, a, a bunch of local musicians. Um, I got Frank Ferrar on guitar, and Matt Schneider on bass, uh, Dan Roth on drums, and Mike Lipsy on percussion. Hmm. And I play guitar and I sing. 
and uh, it's it's just such a fun band to play with. Um, these guys really, I'll bring a new tune to the to the group, and like, and they'll, on the first time they hit it, it just they bring more than I, I possibly ever could have imagined to it. Okay. Cool, it's, it's fantastic. Wow, yeah, yeah. cool. I'm very very fortunate. So you're doing it all the the sculptures, the the animation, the music. Do what you got to do. Do it all, right? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, like I say, life's pretty darn good. Yeah, just set your mind to it and that's it, right? Yeah. Cool stuff. And I live in this fantastic neighborhood. Yeah, in Seacliff. Yeah, I got right. this great view right here. This is this is my house here and I have this fantastic view yeah. overlooking the water. Yeah, and, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, you know, I, there's nowhere I'd really rather live here. Right, I right. I travel all around the world and I just love coming home. I want to thank my guest Andy for being on this week's show. Make sure you tune in again to Kevin's Corner TV on channel 115 every Friday night at 10 p.m. or on YouTube, Kevin's Corner TV. She don't know what to make of love, but she feels the fire. That's the way seduction goes down in Old Havana. That's the way seduction goes down in Old Havana. Walking through the streets of life, looking for adventure. Sexy stranger in her sights, but will she let him enter? She feels the burning and the churning of a fire deep inside. The burning and the yearning of a fire she can't hide. That's the way seduction goes down in the that's the way seduction goes down in Old Havana. Margaritas by the shore, brandy by the fire. Every time he looks at her, her heart grows more desire. She feels the burning and the churning of a fire deep inside. The burning and the yearning of a fire she can't hide. That's the way seduction.